Uh, today we're going to continue into a passage, into the passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 5, we're at verses 31 through 37 today, as we work through the Sermon on the Mount. We haven't uh, quite a ways to go yet, but we're, I don't know, if we're maybe getting closer and closer, close, close to halfway through this, uh, this section of Scripture. And the title of the message this morning is, Say What You Mean. How often do we make a vow and break it? Or how often do we say one thing and do a completely opposite thing? Or how often do we take on responsibility and then don't follow through? Or how often have we made a commitment to follow the Lord on Sunday? You know, we've come forward, we've prayed, we've, uh, or, we, or, or we've sang, and we've heard the sermon, and we say, I'm going to change my life. And then, the next day, we seem to forget what we said we would do. Or we may even, maybe we don't even make it to the next day. And before we, uh, we get through that day, that Sunday, we break what we said to the Lord that we were going to do. Jesus tells us in a few uh, short verses that we look at this morning in our text that we, should make, we shouldn't take or make promises because the follower of God should be as good as his word. So not, not, you know, there's times we have to make vows, you know, we stand and to go to court, we have to make a, a promise, or we uh, stand before the people on our wedding day, and we say, before God, and these, these assembled witnesses, we're making a vow to one another, we're making a promise to one another, but Jesus is, trying, is going to make a point for us this morning, is that, that as a believer in Jesus Christ, our, our word should be good. What we say we're going to do, we do. What we say, when we say yes, we mean yes. When we say no, we really do mean no. Do we say what you, do you say what you mean and do you do what you say? Does your life bring glory to God because you live out your life in honesty, integrity, and loyalty, and, and honor, rather? This morning in our text, it challenges us to do just that. To live with honesty, integrity, and honor. Hear the word of the Lord this morning as we turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 through 37. Beginning in verse 31, it says, I was also, I, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a written notice of, of divorce. But I tell you, everyone who divorces his wife, except for the cause of sexual immorality, causes her to, to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And then in verse 33, he says, Again, you've heard it said, that it was said that to our ancestors, you must not break your oath, but you must keep your oath to the Lord. But I tell you, take an oath, don't, don't, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven, because it is, it's God's throne, or by earth, because it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, because it's the city of the great king, Neither should you swear by your, by your head, because you cannot make a single hair white or black. But let your words be yes. I mean, let, let your, your let me let, let your word yes be yes, and your word your no be no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. Now, is he literally saying to us here in this section of scripture that we should not make any oaths, we should not make any promises? I don't believe that's what he's saying. Again, it's a little bit of hyperbole that like we've seen before, like when he said, cut off your hand if it offends you, or pluck out your eye if it causes you to sin. It's, it's hyperbole. It's, it's exaggeration. He's trying to make a point to say, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a disciple of, of mine, when you come and make a promise, when you come and say, yes, I'm doing this, you mean yes. And when you say no, you mean no. It's pretty simple. It's, it's, it's that simple is what he's trying to get across. As a believer in Christ, you should have integrity, you should have honesty, you should have honor in what you, in how you live out your life. What do those three words mean? I think they're important words for us to get an understanding of, and that's what we're going to try to look at this morning. We're going to walk our way through those three words, beginning with the word honesty. But as we begin that... Let us begin with a word of prayer and ask God to guide us and open our hearts to His message and ask Him to, to help us to understand how we might better live to live in this kind of fashion. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today asking as we open your word and as we continue in this time of worship that our hearts would be open to you to the word that you would have us to hear. 
Holy Spirit, we ask that you, Holy, that you would anoint each, each believer and each one that hears this morning, that you would challenge us and convict us of, of changes that we need to make in our lives. And I ask, your, ask that you, Holy Spirit, just again, give me the words that you would have me speak this morning, that I might bring glory to your name, the name of, the, of, of, of God. And I pray for these things in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. So, three words that I think we need to live by. Three words that I think that, that for me are very important. And they're words that I have instilled my kids and, and uh, in anything that they do. This is something that I always tell them you have to have. These three things. Beginning first with is honesty. Now I remember when um, Alexander was in grade one. We, were, we attended school at Doverport Elementary School. And it was a great day, you know, and he was, you know, a typical six-year-old that he, had, he was all excited about going to school because, and you know how that changes over years, you get to junior high and it's like, oh, I'm not so sure about school and so forth. But Alexander, I recall, he was excited about going to school and, and but he was, he was acting a little strange that morning. And Ardell was getting ready to take him to school and he goes, and, and you know, he, he was, he sort of had his hand in his pocket. And, you know, we, we sort of made it a rule that you don't take things with you to school, right? You just leave your toys at home, you don't, you know, schools for learning, schools for, you know, there's things to do that are fun to play. And Ardella asked him, Alexander, do you have something that, that uh, you're not supposed to be taking, basically, as you, as you got across? And uh, he goes, no, no, I'm all good, you know, everything's fine, everything's good. Well, um, that uh, uh, was... You know, we, we let that go, and, and Ardell began to take, you know, put him in the car, load him in the car, and began to drive him to school, and he kept his hand in his pocket, which is not normal for Alexander. Usually, if he has anything in his hand, is is busy trying to dig a hole through his belly, and, and he liked to play with his belly button when he was that age, too. But um, but he had his hand in his pocket. Now, I didn't ask Alexander permission about this, but so he'll, he'll kill me later. But, but uh, um, as he gets to school, you know, it... Now he's a little getting a little more uptight, a little more anxious, and finally Ardell gets through and and, and he and he eventually he pulls out Batman. Batman went with him to school. This little figure. And Alexander had to learn that honesty was more important, so he had he wasn't allowed to watch TV for how long? A month. So that's what was his punishment. Honesty is very important. What is honesty? Honesty can be defined, if you look in the dictionary, as upright, just, truthful, sincere, genuine, without fraud. So when we say, when Jesus says, let your yes be yes, this is what he's referring to, I believe. He's saying, be honest, be upright, be just, be truthful, be sincere, be genuine, without fraud. Don't let these things, uh, don't, don't, don't tell them, say one thing and do another. Be when you say, when someone asks you a question and, you, and they want an honest answer, give them an honest answer. The believer in Jesus Christ, the, the follower of God, should be someone that, that it, it, uh, is it's a perfect example of honesty. So when your boss says, why were you late? You don't make up some excuse. Ariel bought me this great little book this, for Christmas. And it's called Book of Excuses. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an amazing little book. You, and, uh, you, you can find all kinds of different funny exa examples of what uh, a, a good excuse would be. And, uh, you know, I, I won't give you any because I don't want you to use them. But, uh, but honesty should be the, the, your best policy. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 19 through 22 says this. says, Truthful lips endure forever, ever, but, lying but a lying tongue only a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. No disaster overcomes the righteous, but the wicked are full of misery. Listen to verse 22. It says, Lying lips are detestable to the Lord, but, a faith, but faithful people are His delight. Lying lips are detestable to the Lord. There is no such thing as a little white lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. There's no little, no little lies, there's no good lies, there's no fun lies, or you know, easy lies. There's a lie is just a lie. Honesty 
is the best policy. When Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, he's saying, be honest, don't lie. Why? Well, in Proverbs chapter 12, we learn that Jesus, is, or God, tells us through Scripture that lying is detestable to him. Well, you know, if we look into James chapter 3, we get another picture of this. And in James chapter 3, the chap that whole chapter refers to what God would tell us is, that, is, is how the tongue can be a disaster for us. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive a stricter judgment. For all will stumble, for we all stumble in many ways, rather. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a mature man who is also able to control his whole body. Now, when we put a bit into the mouth of a horse to make them obey us, we guide the whole animal. So when we control the mouth, he's saying, we're able to control the animal. So if you've ever gone horseback riding, and you know, if you've ever had a horse that doesn't want to follow the bit, it's terrible. They have, it's, it's on their, you know, they'll go their own way and you have to really grief on, the, on that, those reins and they, and they you know, get their, their attention. But here, Jesus, uh, James is telling the, the people, people that he's writing to, is that we need to be like the horse that is controlled by the bit. Or he says, consider how, or pardon me, so it's, let me, I lost my spot there. Oh, and consider ships. Though very large and driven by fierce winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So just, you know, if you've seen some of the biggest ships, they, all they have is a small rudder that, that, direct, that directs them, that controls them. Consider how large a large forest, a small fire, ignite, uh, fire ignites, and the, and the tongue is a, is a fire. The tongue... A, wor a world of unrighteousness is, a pl is placed among the parts of our body. It pollutes the whole body. It sets the course of life on fire, and it sets the it, and it sets on, on fire by hell. Every sea creature, reptile, bird, animal, or animal is tamed and has been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a, it is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. We praise our Lord and Father with it. And we curse men who are made in God's likeness with it. Praising and cursing come out of the same mouth, my, my brothers. These things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out a sweet and bitter uh, water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives, but my brothers, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can salt water spring yield or spring yield fresh water. <clears throat> Who is wise and has understanding among them? He should show his works by good conduct with his wisdom, with, with wisdom's gentleness. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't brag and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where envy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure. Then, peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without favoritism, hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace by those who cultivate peace. What he's trying to get across here, basically, is that we need to understand what we say, what we do with our mouth, what we say with our tongues, is very important. It can really change all those around us. It can be poison. It can be, it can be hurtful. Honesty is so important. I'd rather someone tell me in honesty what is what I'm doing wrong than trying to, to butter me up to get across their what they what they want me to think. Honesty, even if it's a little bit hurt, can hurt at, at times. To me, still more important. We go on to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 20 says, One with a twisted mind will not succeed. One with a deceitful speech will fall into ruin. Then we go to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 16 through 17. It says, These are the things you must, must do. Speak truth to one another. Make true and sound decisions with, within your dates. Do not plot evil in your hearts against your neighbor. And do not love perjury, for I hate all this. This is the Lord's declaration. So you see, in other words, what we're trying to get, what I'm trying to get across here is that God has no place for us to 
have lying in our, in our speech. Honesty is a must if we want to be a follower of God. Honesty is a must if we want to be His children. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 says, Put away lying, speak the truth, each one, of, one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. So in other words, we should have the courtesy to be honest and not lie to one another. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 to 15 we read, Look, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Listen to this. Verse, last verse of, of Revelation chapter 22, verse 15 that I want to pay, you to pay attention to. This. Outside are, do are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the adulterers, and everyone who loves and practices lying. So you say if you are if you, if you don't you only tell little lies. Jesus in, in this passage of scripture here, this is Jesus speaking to, to his believers. He's telling us you're no different than a sorcerer, that no different than a dog, no different than a sexual the sexually immoral, no different than the murderers, the adulterers, those who follow after false gods. If you lie, that's who you're being placed with. Even the little lies. There's no such thing as a little lie, as we said. Well, let's go on. Living with integrity. So we're to live, live with honesty. Let's live with integrity as well. What's integrity? It's integrity is uprightness, true, virtue, honesty. Integrity. If you don't have your integrity, you have nothing. Integrity is, is very important. I see this as a person who follows through and does what he, they say they will do. It's so important. Every time that we don't do what we say we're going to do, we lose that much more of people willing to hear us, to trust us, to follow our dreams. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 says, Instead, we have renounced shameful secret things, not walking in deceit or distorting God's message, but commending ourselves to every person's conscience in God's sight by an open display of the truth. Integrity. In Job chapter 27, verse 1 through 5, Job continues his discourse saying, As God lives, who has deprived me of justice, and the Almighty who has made me bitter, as long as my breath is still in me, and the breath of God remains in my nostrils, my lips will not speak unjustly, and my tongue will not utter deceit. I will never affirm you, you that you are right. I will maintain my integrity until I die. If you hold on to anything in your life, hold on to your integrity. If you say and tell others that you go to church and that you are a believer in Jesus Christ, begin to live your life out so that that is so obvious that they wouldn't have to ask you that question. They would ask the question, why is your life so different? As in Job's situation, that he had to express to those that are around him who said, Job, just curse God and die. Job, just give up because your family's gone, God, all your possessions are gone, you're, you have these sores, your body is sick, you are, you, your, your life is miserable. Just curse God and die. But, God, but Job's response is, as long as I have breath in my life, I will have the integrity to live as God has intended me to live. I will not give up on what God has called me, has called me to. I will not give up on God because God has not given up on me. I'll, I'll live because this is how God expects of what God expects of me. In Psalm chapter 26, he said, uh, David says, Vindicate me, Lord, because I have li lived with integrity and have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind, for your faithful love is before my eyes, and I live by, by your truth. I do not sit with the worthless or associate with hypocrites, I hate a crowd of evildoers. I do not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, Lord, raising my voice in thanksgiving and telling of your wonderful works. Lord, I love the house where you dwell, the place where your, your glories reside. Do not destroy me along with the sinners or my life along with, with men of bloodshed, in whose hands are evil schemes and whose right hands are filled with bribes. But I live 
with integrity. Hear that. I live with integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. I'll praise the Lord in the assembly. David is saying, even with all that I've faced, even with all that I've endured, I'm going to live with integrity. No matter what men might do to me, no matter what men have said about me, no matter what they tried to do to me by, by killing me, by, by turning their back on me, I'm going to live with integrity. I'm going to bring my praise to God. I'm going to lift my voice to the Lord God who has, who has, who has raised me up. Who has freed me. Who has cared for me. Integrity. You see, even in the face of, of difficulty, love God. When we lived in Saskatoon, we left there at the probably the bottom of my life to this point, I can say. I was so sad. My heart was so broken. But I think I had integrity. That I knew God still loved me. And I would not turn my back on him. No matter what you face, God loves you. Have integrity and follow the Lord. Don't be like those who are so quick to turn and go another direction. Trust God. Even when things seem so difficult, it seems like the world is just against you, that, that nobody around you cares, nobody around you loves you, nobody around you is there to help you, God loves you. Have integrity and all that show Trust. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And when we put these all together, what we're really talking about is living with honor. So we live with, with uh, honesty, we live with integrity, and when we put those together, that means that we live with honor. Definition of that word is respectful regard, respectful regard, high esteem, uprightness, and listen to this. Honesty and integrity is the definition. You see, if you can do that, not only do you bring regard to yourself, and people say, there is something different about him or her. Because of your life and following after God, regardless of what you experience, you bring honor also to God. Glory to his name. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13 through and 14, it says, If you keep from desecrating the Sabbath, from doing whatever you want on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, so in other words, Sabbath being Sunday, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, if you honor it, not going your own way, seeking your own pleasure, or talking too much, then you'll delight yourself in the Lord. And it will make you ride over heights of land and that you enjoy the heritage of your father Jacob for the mouth of your Lord has spoken. If you live in a respectful way, if you say, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to live my life, this is how I'm going to do things, I'm not going to do things like the world. So you're going to say yes to the Lord and no to the world and you're going to live with honor and integrity and honesty. What a difference your life will experience. Thus says the Lord God. God says here in this little section of scripture, in this little piece of, 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 of wisdom, that I'll make you ride over the heights of the land and let you enjoy the heritage of your father Jacob. You see, how you might say, well, I'm not, I'm not Jewish, though, so how does this apply to me? Well, the reality is, when you come to Christ, you're adopted in, you're grafted in, you have become a part of the chosen people. You are the people of Israel. And as a result, you can enjoy the delights of, the, of what God has in, in store for you. He'll make you ride over the heights of the land, so you'll be able to, to, be able to, to manage, to endure whatever the world might throw at you. 
see the person that is a disciple of the Lord, who is born again, who calls himself a disciple of Jesus Christ, will not operate like the world. If you say, if you say you'll do it, you'll do it. If you say you'll get the job done, you'll get the job done. You see, a formal contract or a job or a job description should not be needed. We should be above reproach. The world and your and your church family should have, have any, not have any questions about what you believe or what you'll do. Our faith should be without question because of how we live our lives. You see, I really believe today Jesus needs every one of us here to be willing to say yes, or let our yes be yes, and let our no's be no. You need to say what you mean. And this is what I really believe is the key to all this little section of Scripture. We need to, he's, what he's saying is we need to stop playing games. Stop playing games in our lives and live with the honesty, integrity, and honor. So that no one can say, oh, you can Have they act? You see, you've got to remember what remember what we looked at a few weeks ago when he said about the, about the when he says you need to be above what the what the, the uh, Pharisees were. You need your righteousness to be righteousness to exceed the, the Pharisees. You say that you got to that point. Only let God show you what you need to do in your life. Will you allow today the Holy Spirit to convict you of what you need? Adjustments you need to make. What do you do? Will your yes be yes and your no be no? I ask the worship team to come at this time and lead us in another song. And as we sing these last couple songs, would you consider what God is trying to place on your heart? Is there something that you need to, to commit to Him? Or is there something that you need to adjust in? Will you take that moment? Just say, yes, Lord, I mean it, but I mean what I say. I'm going to do what you ask me to do, as they say to you.